there's a few ways we can approach this. I think the best way to start is sort of explaining how Linux audio works, how Pipewire fits into the stack, and then we can move into the whole session manager stuff. So, yeah, I, I guess this is, this could be an entire conversation just by itself, but how does audio work on Linux? Like, what what is actually happening here? Right. So at the lower level, you have um, ALSA, which is a component of the kernel. And this is the component that interacts with the sound hardware, the audio devices. And it exposes them to the user space, to the applications that are running on our session. Nowadays, with Pipewire, uh, how this works is that Pipewire runs on top of that. So it's exactly the layer above ALSA. It grabs your ALSA devices, it opens them, uh, configures them with the correct parameters, and then creates the appropriate um, objects that allow applications to basically uh, connect to Pipewire and link to that sound card and, and get access to the sound card and either play audio or record audio from there. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know how much in detail we we, we You we can want go to get, into as much uh, detail as you want to. <laughs> As a starting I, I, point, I, I understand right? uh, that this convers like this topic, is such a broad question that you could just spend the entire conversation just talking about this specific question. Yeah, right, right. Um, so Pipewire is basically something that sits between your applications and the sound card, and it's it started from something else. Actually, it started from um, being a uh, a video device uh, broker, let's say. Uh, it, it's something that was well supposed to connect to your cameras and give access to th applications to those cameras, right? Yeah, some people may know that the... originally there was the discussion of Pulse Video. Exactly, yeah. It started from Pulse Video. It was actually being called Pulse Video initially, yeah. And then it got renamed twice until we reached Pipewire. Um, so that was the original idea. Uh, but it, it it seemed like something more generic could be done out of it. And so we built the support for audio devices as well and also other things. And uh, I think it was modeled as a generic multimedia bus. But if you if you watch my talks, I often refer to it as a multimedia bus. It's not really an audio server. It's something that allows to transport media from one place to the other. And that these two places can also be two applications. So you can have application A, application B, and then these two link with each other and they transport media, either audio or video from one point to the other. Or MIDI, right? It supports MIDI as well. An example of this being what we're doing right now. I'm taking the audio from Discord, I'm sending it into OBS. Exactly, yeah. OBS is a great example of that and you can take audio from Discord, send it to OBS. Also, OBS will be capturing from um, capturing the video from your uh, Wayland compositor. Uh, and then, so your, your, the Wayland compositor connects to Pipewire, it sends the video there, and then other applications can grab it. Mm -hmm. So this is the generic mechanism. And then uh, one of the let's say plugins there is the, the ALSA plugin, right? The support for uh, accessing audio devices. Mm -hmm. And yeah, how this works is that it, it, has, um, it has a system there which detects uh, your audio devices um, and tries to make out the best um, you know, representation of what's out there because right, on the ALSA level, it's just a device handle, which you can open with different parameters. It could be, you could set different rates, different channels. Um, you can do crazy things, uh, but it's not really something that's user friendly, right? So Pipewire sits in the middle and it tries to detect what's on your sound card using some configuration as well there. Um, and 
yeah it, then it, then it basically uh, creates uh, those um, more user friendly device objects that we see on the uh, on let's say pavu control mm -hmm. when you want to change your uh, profiles and change your outputs you, you normally use pavu control or or gnome settings or kd audio settings or something like that uh, this is where you see the um, the devices that pipewire has detected and mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. change there and that creates nodes then the nodes can be linked to applications and that's pretty much how it works mm -hmm. now if you go on the internet and look how audio on linux works uh, there you might get confused mm -hmm. because people will say oh we have all of these frameworks right we have alsa we have pulse audio we have jack we have pipewire we have gstreamer we have vlc we have i don't know a bunch of things if you're really but... old you might know open sound system open sound system yes of course <laughs> Um, not really relevant today, but still, still part of that older conversation. Yeah, it's it's not really relevant today exactly, and 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 all of these are basically different components that sit at different levels. If you, but if we're looking at the modern stuff, what what we use today, it's basically that it's Alsa on the kernel level, then Pipewire sits on top, then applications which might be using GStreamer, might be using VLC, might be using some other library like FFmpeg or whatever, mm -hmm. and they, they talk to Pipewire through that, and then Pipewire talks to Alsa. That's the the whole stack nowadays. Mm -hmm. So we also have the, you were saying about these plugins. So we have like the, the Pulse Audio plugin, the Jack plugin, the GStreamer plugin. So applications are expecting a certain API, and that's sort of why those plugins exist. It provides a way for those applications to interact with Pipewire through the language they already know? Yeah, so for compatibility reasons, we have, um, we support different APIs mm -hmm. on Pipewire. Of course, Pipewire has its native API, uh, but then we have also the Pulse Audio API and the Jack API, so all the applications that were previously talking to Pulse Audio through the Pulse Audio API can still work and function as they were before mm -hmm. by just talking to the Pipewire server through the Pulse Audio API. And that Pulse Audio API is basically using a, a socket, a Unix domain socket, where um, all the, the the original Pulse Audio library writes commands into that socket, and basically Pipewire sits on the other side and it listens to that to these commands. And it responds in the same way that um, Pulse Audio was uh, previously mm -hmm. um, responding. Uh, same for Jack. No, Jack is a little bit different uh, in how the, we have done the API emulation. We basically don't use the original Jack library, but we provide another library, which is the replacement um, Pipewire Jack API library. And applications, instead of like, calling the original functions from the Jack library. They just link to a new library, which provides the same functions mm -hmm. and they call those. And then this um, library translates the commands directly into Pipewire native right. API calls. So, mm -hmm. um, so what happens there is we, the, the Jack applications actually use the native Pipewire socket to talk to Pipewire, mm -hmm. um, just using the pipe, the Jack API on their end to talk to the library. I did not know that. Okay. We've already learned something today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And finally, we have also the ALSA compatibility. So some older applications um, want to talk to ALSA directly. So they, they just go to ALSA and they try to open a device and you know send audio there. And what we can do with um, the ALSA user space library, ALSA lib, it's, it supports loading plugins. So basically the application that talks to ALSA, it doesn't actually try to open the raw kernel device directly, but what it does, it asks the ALSA library to open the device. Mm -hmm. So the ALSA library then can load a plugin and that plugin knows that Pipewire is running. So it uses again, the native Pipewire API to talk to Pipewire. So it talks through the socket to Pipewire directly and you get the audio that, that way. Right. So again, it's it's going directly to Pipewire through the native Pipewire socket. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, th these are the three 
APIs oh, we have. Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, so I guess this, there's probably a lot of ways to answer this, but why have we done this move from Pulse Audio as the main thing that applications interact with to this migration into Pipewire now that, you know, it has this... I assume part of it is the fact that it has these plugins to interact with all these different APIs, but is it more to it than just that? Is it the fact that it also has this video capability, which is obviously relevant on the Wayland side? Do you have maybe some in uh, insight into why this shift has been happening basically across every distro? I think most have pretty much adopted it just by default now. Yeah, well, the adoption is driven by... Uh where the community wants to go. And since Pulse Audio is being phased out even by, by its maintainers, the maintainers are saying publicly that they support Pipewire now. Mm -hmm. So that means that Pulse Audio is going to be unmaintained in a couple of years. And obviously we need to switch, right? So that's why people ha have been switching. But besides that, um, Pipewire is just a better implementation of the whole thing mm -hmm. and i when i say better i mean um th there's there's a couple of reasons right uh, one reason is the latency so with pipewire because it targets also the pro audio use cases and it targets also emulating the jack api it has been built with a very different architecture internally which allows it to deliver audio with very, very low latency, um, even beating Jack in some cases, right? At some benchmarks. And that is something that Pulse Audio was never able to do. Mm -hmm. It will never be able to do. It has to do with the internal architecture, how things are handled internally. Yes, mm -hmm. right? If we wanted to make it transport up, up audio with so low latency, we would have to rewrite it. But you know, we have Pipewire now, so it doesn't make sense. Um, then I guess the other thing is that by having all those use cases built into Pipewire, we, by having Pulse Audio and Jack use cases built in, now we don't have to fiddle with the actual Jack audio server. So on default, setups, desktop setups, you can run any application, even if it's a Pulse Audio application or a Jack application, and it will work. Mm -hmm. That's something that was really painful for users to set up in the past, where you would have to either remove Pulse Audio, um, like move it on the side and let Jack take over. And then if you wanted your browser to work, then you had to change your browser settings as well to talk to Jack. If you wanted other apps to work, like it was a fr frustrating thing to, to make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had setups where Pulse Audio would run as a client to Jack, right? So you, right. applications would talk to Pulse Audio and then Pulse Audio, instead of talking to Alsa, it would talk to Jack and then Jack would talk to Alsa. So we were stacking things up. Right. And this is a setup that, you know, it works, but it's not trivial to set up. People didn't have a great time like doing that and it mm -hmm. felt mm -hmm. difficult. So. One of the reasons is yeah, being user-friendly as well. 